after a show one night, a woman came up to me and said, I thought you were wonderful tonight. I said, well, thank you. She said, you sounded just like the guy in the film. And I said, thank you very much. It's a great compliment. <laughs> Funny and weird things happen actually almost every night. Mm -hmm. One of the funniest things that happened when we were on stage is the night that your wig came off. We always had a plan, and it was always a joke. If my hair ever fell off, I would say, look at me, I'm so ticked off, I'm molting. Lo and behold, just the two of us are on stage. I stepped on the velvet prison cape. I fell. 200 pounds of DDR force against a steel stage whipped my hair completely off. And I'm kind of dazed and confused, and Freeman is like handing me his hand. He's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. And I look at the audience and I'm completely bald. <laughs> and then I, I pick up my wig and I go, look at me, I'm so ticked off, I'm molting. And the audience goes, this is a weird show. Uh, and <laughs> so like, oh my God, I lost it again. Um, and then I put my wig back on my head and it's glued, right? Oh my gosh, you're getting, no. This is how it is in the show, by the way. <laughs> Things fall oh down, gosh, I go you. to pick them up. <laughs> So I had to say live theater folks, and finally yeah. they were like, oh, like oh, it totally made sense. Yeah. That was the, the craziest thing that's ever happened to me. There was a night that James, in, in, in all good humor, it was really very funny, decided he was gonna stop for a minute and stop and have some time with the interpreters. He had this great bit and he says, y'all have to say whatever I say, don't you? And then they said it, it and he, right. So he had a whole <laughs> four or five minute bit just messing with the interpreters. And, and he did it with such good humor. There was nothing inappropriate that he said to them. There was full respect for them and everything, but it was hilarious. Yeah. And of course, we all had to kind of gather ourselves and then proceed with the show. But that was a wonderful moment. When we were rehearsing for Aladdin, I'm gonna give you up, is that all right? That's totally fine. When we were rehearsing Aladdin, we were across the street what were they called? The New 42. The New 42 Studios upstairs. And from the windows in the studio, we could look across the street and see the marquee for Aladdin going up. We were staring out the window one day, Didi and I, and, we're, and he was like, wow, look at that. They're putting up the, the, the signs for Aladdin. We were in rehearsals, and we were getting ready to go out of town. So there was nothing in the theater very much. And I said, well, you want to go over in, to the theater later? And he was like, can we do that? And I was like, I don't see why not. But the theater was empty. And we walked down the aisle, and we walked through the pass door and onto the stage. And DDR was completely, his eyes were as big as saucers. It made me feel great because I was like, oh, he's really excited to be walking into a Broadway theater. I mean, I've been in a lot of them by that time. And I said, you want to go out on the stage? And we got out on the stage, and he broke into tears. It was cool. Like, that was going to be our Broadway home, you know? And five years later, we still are there. I had just moved to New York. Like, I had never lived in New York before. Well, you had a lot at stake. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, moved everything here, given up his life in Seattle because we're doing a Broadway show. After eight years, I suppose what, what I keep coming back to is it's, it's, it's a home for us. And it's a family. Yeah. It really is a family. Yeah. It's a good one, too. We're lucky.